What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going to 1 Chronicles chapter 26. Hallelujah. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death has taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And so chapter 26, let's get into it. For the divisions of the gatekeepers, there were of the Kohathites, Meshelam the son of Kor, the sons of, of the sons of Asaph, Meshelamiah had sons, Zechariah the firstborn, Jediah the second, Zebediah the third, Jathniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Johanan the sixth, Eliahonai, the seventh, Obed-Edom, had sons. Shemaiah, the firstborn, Jehazabad, the second, Joah, the third, Sekah, the fourth, Nethanel, the fifth, Am Amiel, the sixth, Issachar, the seventh, and Peluthai, the eighth. God, God had indeed blessed him, blessed him. Also to his son Shemaiah, sons were born. Who ruled over the house of their father, for they were mighty men of valor. The sons of Shemaiah were Othni, Raphael, Obed, and Eliabad, whose brothers, Elihu, and Semachiah, were, were valiant men. All these were the sons of Obed Edom, and this Obed Edom, that's the one who originally took the ark when they when the Israelites got the ark back from the Philistines. And when they were carrying it back, somebody was struck dead for touching the ark. Then they just put it aside in the house of Obed-Edom. And Obed-Edom was a major man in the Bible. All these were the sons of Obed-Edom. And their sons and their relatives were able men of strength for service. 62 from Obed-Edom. Meshelamiah had sons and relatives, 18 valiant men. And Hosea... One of the sons of Merari had sons, Shimri the first, parentheses, although he was not the firstborn, his father made him first, and parentheses, Hilkiah the second, Tebaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth. All the sons of relative, sons and relatives of, of Hosea were thirteen. To these divisions of the gatekeepers, the chief men who were given duties like the relatives to men, like their relatives, to minister in the house of Yahuwah, they cast lots, a small and a great alike, according to their father's households, for every gate. The lot to the east fell to Shelemiah. Then they cast lots for his son, Zechariah, a counselor with insight. And his lot came out to the north. For Obed-Edom, it fell to the south. And to his sons went to the, went the storehouse. For Shupim and Hoso, it was to the west, by the gate of Shalaketh, on the ascent, on the ascending highway, guard corresponding to, corresponding to guard. On the east there were six Levites, on the north four daily, on the south four daily, and at the storeho storehouse two by two. At the par bar, on the west there were four at the highway, and two of two at the par bar. The par bar. Uh, uh, the footnote here says, possibly court or colonnade. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers of the sons of Korah and the sons of Merari. The Levites, their relatives, had charge of the treasures of the house of God and the treasures of, of the dedicated gifts. The sons of Laden, the sons of, of the Gershonites, belonging to Laden, namely Je the Jehelites, 
were heads of their father's households belonging to Laden the Gershonite. The sons of Jehili, Zetham, and Joel, his brother, had charge of the treasures of the house of Yahuwah. As for the Amramites, the Israelites, the Hebronites, and the Uzeelites, Shebuel, the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, was officer over the treasures. Sheb one more song. Shebuel, the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, was officer over the treasures. His relatives by Eliezer were Rehabiah, his son, Jeshiah, his son, Joram, his son, Zikri, his son, and Shelemoth, his son. This Shelemoth and his relatives had, had charge of all the treasures and the, and the dedicated gifts which King David and the heads of the father's households, the commanders of the thousands and, and hundreds, and the commanders of the army had dedicated. The dedicated part of the spoil won in battles to repair the house of Yahuwah. And all that Samuel the seer had dedicated and Saul the son of Kish, Abner the son of Ner, and Joab the son of Zeruiah, everyone who had dedicated anything, all of this was in the care of Shelemoth and his relatives. As for the Israelites, Chenaniah and his sons were assigned to the outside duties for Israel as officers and judges. As for the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his relatives, 1,700 capable men had charge of the affairs of Israel, west of the Jordan, for all the work of Yahuwah and the service of the king. As for the Hebronites, Jerijah the chief, parentheses, these Hebronites were investigated according to their genealogies and father's households in the 40th year of David's reign, and men of outstanding cap capability were found among them at Jazer of Gilead. And so let me just read that without the parentheses, because that means it was likely added into the original translation. As for the Hebronites, Jerijah the chief, and his relatives, capable men, were 2,700 in number, heads of their father's households. And King David made them overseers of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of the Manassites, concerning all the affairs of God and the king. And that's the end of 1 Chronicles 25. Let's be humble. Let's be blameless. Let's serve God with all our heart. We need to hustle for God. We need to be right with him and ready and help others be right with him and ready. We need to shine his light. And do his will in all things. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, he loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. And if you believe that, if you believe that he died for you on the cross in order, order to offer you eternal life. And you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. Thank you all for tuning in. Love you all. Shalom.